Today I'm sharing my plans for a new astro imaging rig. We're building a hyperstar system. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I'm really excited to be building new astrophotography rig and I decided to try out the Hyperstar from the folks over at Star Arizona. In this video I'll take you through my plans and show you some of the gear that I'll be using to make this a complete grab and go system. Many of you out there will have heard of Hyperstar, but for those who don't know, it's basically just a separate lens assembly that you fit onto the front of a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, like the Celestron C6 that I'm using here. The Hyperstar unit replaces the scope's secondary mirror, and it provides a wider field of view, and more crucially for me, much faster imaging by drastically decreasing the telescope's focal ratio. In my case, my Celestron C6, which has a native focal ratio of f10, will become a very fast f2 system. I'll link to Sarazona's website below so you can read more about it. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Diane over at Starazona, who was an absolute star in answering all my endless questions about the Hyperstar 6 and provided first class customer service. Thanks, Diana. So let's take a look now at my reasons for getting the Hyperstar and some of the gear that I'll be using to make this a fast imaging rig. I've already hinted at one of the reasons why I'm interested in the Hyperstar, and that's its speed. Here in the UK, imaging sessions can be few and far between, so anytime we get clear skies, we need to maximise them. We Brits famously talk about the weather a lot, but when you're a UK astrophotographer, this is ramped up to a whole new level. By changing my focal ratio from f10 to f2, I'll theoretically be able to image around 25 times faster during my sessions. So sub-exposures of several minutes, which are typical in astrophotography at higher focal ratios, are reduced to seconds with the Hyperstar. I'm looking forward to seeing how this looks in real world testing, so stay tuned for my first light video with this system. If you'd like to follow my journey with the Hyperstar and keep up to date with all my astrophotography adventures from here in the UK, then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. It's not only the speed of my telescope that'll change, I'll also benefit from a wider field of view when imaging. By adding the Hyperstar to my C6, I'll be altering the focal length of the scope from its native 1500mm down to 300mm. This will be great for large bright objects in the night sky, and I'm looking forward to experimenting with this. It's not only traditional imaging sessions that I'll be using the Hyperstar for, I'm also looking to try it out with some EAA sessions or electronically assisted astronomy. By replacing an eyepiece for a camera, I can take a series of very short exposures and then use software to stack these subs over time to build up a nice image over a short period. It's kind of like traditional astronomy on steroids. I'm planning some live streams over the coming months to try out the EAA capabilities of this Hyperstar system, so let me know in the comments below which targets you'd like me to image. Okay, let's talk gear. The foundation of this new system is obviously the telescope, and I've chosen a Celestron C6. Its small size and lightweight make this an ideal grab-and-go hyperstar system, and I've seen great results online, especially Queeve the Lazy Geek's YouTube channel and from Tez over on Instagram. They've been doing some great things with the hyperstar and border locations much worse than mine, so I'm excited to see what I can get from my location. I'll link to their channels in the description below, so go check them out. I'd been searching for months for a C6 OTA, but due to the supply issues that have been plaguing us all, it was really hard to come by. I eventually found a Nexstar 6SE for sale, and even though I only really needed the scope, I grabbed it anyway, and I'll use the tripod and alt as mount for another scope. This C6 has Celestron Starbright XLT coatings on it, so I'm hoping this will give me sharp and vibrant views of the targets that I'll be imaging. To give me more stability for imaging, I've taken the standard dovetail plate off and replaced it with two sturdy tube rings, which I'll mount on two Lozmandy plates, one at the top and one at the bottom. They're on their way to me now, so I'll get these fitted as soon as I get them. Although the thinner Vixen-style plate would have probably been okay for this rig, the beefier Laws Mandy plates will give me more mounting options when adding extra gear, which I'll cover now. I've got two cameras in mind when using this rig, and I'll likely stick to one-shot colour to streamline my sessions and avoid any unnecessary filter changes. I'll primarily be using the Player One Uranus C due to its small size, lightweight and sensor size. It also benefits from a non amglo sensor, so that'll make calibration and processing much easier, hopefully. The Uranus C is an uncooled camera, but because I'll be using it for short exposures, I'm not expecting too many issues with noise in my images. I'll report back on the camera's properties when I get a chance to test it fully, and I'll do a full review in another video, so stay tuned for that. I've been happily using the Player One Apollo M Max for my solar imaging, and it's been an excellent performer, so I'm expecting the same great results from the Uranus C. You may have seen Luke over on his channel using the Uranus C with a Rasa 8, so go check out his results too. I'll link to him in the description below. For times when I'm planning longer exposures, I'll use my ZWO 533MC Pro, which I absolutely love, and it's been great in other projects. Check out the video linked above to see my recent review of it. Although it shares the same non amglo properties of the Uranus C, the 533 differs in that it's a cooled camera, so I can automatically set the temperature and give consistent results over longer exposures. 
Thanks to Diane over at Star Arizona, I was advised I'd need an extra adapter to fit the 533 onto the Hyperstar, so I just grabbed that too at the time of ordering. The Hyperstar unit sits on the front of the scope and the camera is attached to it directly, so it'll be strange seeing the camera in that position, as we're all used to seeing it at the back of our astrophotography rigs. I'm really keen to use an autofocus solution for this rig, so I've opted for the Celestron Motor Focuser. This will fit in the back of the scope and replace the native focus knob. By using imaging software like Nina, I can get it to autofocus the scope while I sit indoors. It saves fiddling with manual focus too, and it'll hopefully give me sharp and consistent stars across the field. For dew prevention, I've got the Celestron dew heater ring and the dew shield designed specifically for the C6 OTA. Through software, the dew ring can be controlled automatically to kick in when needed, so this will ensure the front plate doesn't fog up during my imaging sessions and potentially ruin all my hard work. I've also grabbed the dew shield, which on the face of it might be a bit overkill alongside the dew ring, but I got it to help block out any potential unwanted light pollution or glare on my subs. It's also more rigid than traditional dew shield, so it'll be handy for plonking on my LED flat panel when taking flat calibration frames. I'm also hoping the included cover cap will help with taking my dark and bias frames and also keep dust at bay when the scope's not being used. The whole system will be controlled remotely with a mini PC. I'll be using the B-Link U59, which will be attached to the top of the scope on one of the Laws Mandy plates that I'll be fitting. I'll remote into this mini PC from my main computer indoors, and that means I can keep an eye on progress and all the subs coming in. I'll be covering this process in a follow-up video, so stay tuned for that. So that's my first look at my new imaging rig plans. In the next video of the series, I'll have the components fitted, and we'll get a first light test where I'll share my results. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. A link to all the gear I mentioned in the video in the description below, so go check that out if you want to pick something up for your own rig. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and clear skies to you all.